Hello? 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 It came on on my back. Is that working? It keeps on and off. Yeah. All right, we'll switch it. So, can take this one. Last night when we went to bed, my wife asked me to tell you a story that I didn't tell you last night. And uh, we were coming from Cameroon into Republic Africa Central. And when we left Cameroon, there was about, from memory, 12 kilometers of no man's land. It was just mud and mud and mud. And we got through this and um, we came into this little town, the border town, and it was a clean little town. There was some mud stucco buildings, and we came in, there was a little roundabout, and <coughs> direction this way, direction that way, and the sign said Duan, which is Immigration and Customs. We went, we, we drove this way, we saw the immigration building on a hill, and there was two big gates, so we, we drove and we just drove up to the Duan. I got off my bike, I took some papers, I walked in, and the gendarme came, gendarme came out and he said, Qui est le pilote? Who is the driver? Pourquoi, monsieur? Moi? Who, why, me? Vien, come. He walked me down to the gates. As we drove through those big main gates, there was a small sign about the size of that Horizons Unlimited sticker they have on the table. And it was the international sign for no entry. <laughs> <laughs> but you couldn't see it, it was on the side of the gate. And he, he takes me up and he starts to write me a fine. And I kind of told him, on your bike, Trevor, in French. And I wouldn't pay him. So then we go to process our passports and the man did our details. Now the gendarme was in uniform and all the other officials there were rather slovenly dressed in civilian clothes. And when he finished taking our details, he said, donnez moi 30 dollars, give me 30 dollars. And I, I, I didn't pay. So he took the passports and he locked them in his drawer, walked out of his office and he locked the office. And off he went. So there was a big ante room where we came in. You could come in from here or here. The gendarme was there and there were officers around this ante room. So I told my wife, unpack the bike, you can put our beds here, put your stove there, put the rest of our stuff there. And she started to unpack and my daughter's carrying stuff in and one of the adjutants, I presume he was the lieutenant, he went to grab my wife and I said, Monsieur, c'est vous plaît, ne dérange pas ma femme, sir, if you don't mind, don't touch my wife. He stood back. So we slept there that night, we cooked our food, they had a flag ceremony. They don't want us to put our stuff there, but I said, our passport is there, so we have to guard our passport. I said, the passports, <laughs> the passports belong to the Australian government, this is an international incident and I'm going to stay here. <laughs> Now, I'm not trying to pretend I'm smart, I'm just trying to say when you're desperate, you don't know what to do. I'm not trying to be a clever bastard, but we didn't know what else to do. So when they had their flag ceremony, our bike was parked out the front, and they lowered the flag and doing all this business. So I went out in a sarong, and I had a water bag, and I put a basin on the back of the bike, and I did my ablution. So I left my sarong on, because you always do in Africa, as you never get naked but I washed myself while I did it, poured water over myself, dried myself and went inside. I was trying to make a point. The next day, all the, is that too loud?
the next day, all these, oh, this one. I've been told not to stand in front. I'm a bit scared of this man. <laughs> the, the next day, everyone turned up in the Sunday go to meet in uniforms with their hats and creases. The day, it was funny, everyone came in in uniform. It was wow. And we camped there. About 10 o'clock, people are coming in. They had to step over us to try to get to the offices. We didn't raise our voices. We didn't get angry. We didn't know what to do. You think $30 isn't much? Well, we're going back 20 years. But $30 every day, we didn't have enough money for that. We couldn't afford to. We didn't generally pay bribes. I, don't, I think I've only ever paid one bribe in my life. And I could have got around that if I used my coconut shell. So, about 10 o'clock or so, I was called into the colonel's office. I didn't know there was a colonel. I hadn't seen him. And he sat me down in his big office and he yelled at me in French for maybe 10 minutes and told me what a shithead I was <laughs> and all the rest. And I just sat there and then he gave me my passports and told us to go. And uh, so we packed up, we left. <clears throat> We went a small distance out of town. We were stopped by a military checkpoint. They did all our paperwork again. We went another 30. We'd gone perhaps 30 kilometers. We were stopped by the gendarmes. And there was a two posts and a, a pole. And the sign said, arrêt, in French it means to stop. We learned to stop right there. We're not trying to be clever. We just, you gotta survive. Because sooner or later a donkey cart or a truck will come and I'll be in the way. And so they'll tell me, you must, first they'd say, don't park there, don't park there. And I'd say, je ne comprends I don't understand. And I pretended I didn't understand. But as soon as someone else came, they had to open the boom. And they tell me I have to move my bike, I'd put it on the other side. <laughs> and it's like, okay, we got, we're getting somewhere. <laughs> anyway, we went and registered. We had to go maybe 150 feet to a little shack, little fat shack, and the gendarme registered us and he asked for the passports, so I gave him one passport. And he said, no, monsieur, tout le passeport, all the passports. Pardon, je ne comprends I don't understand. Oh. He filled out the, on a cigarette packet, he wrote our details. And as soon as he finished, I told my daughter to come with me, and she's uh, 10 years old. And I told him to grab the passport. So as soon as he put it on the table, the little hand took it. <laughs> I, I gave him the next one, he did it. And as soon as he put it, the little hand took it. And he did all three passports. And then I said, run back to the bike and hide the passports because I knew what was, knew what was coming. Now we've been in Zaire more than 20, in Republic Africa Central, more than 24 hours. We've come 30 kilometers. And then, uh, then he said, donnez-moi 30 dollars, give me $30, $10 each to register us on a fag packet, you know? And I said, monsieur, nous n'avons pas d'argent, so we don't have money. And this went on backwards and forwards, donnez-moi 30 dollars, monsieur, nous n'avons pas d'argent. And while he was doing that, I walked backwards to the bike, and we eventually got back to the bike, and I'm, I didn't know what to do. I thought if I took off all my clothes and sat in the street, maybe that would help. I, did. I really didn't know what to do. And he's in my face hassling me. And uh, I turned the bike and Matea had hidden us passports under the seat of the bike and she's sitting there like this. Like, and I picked her up and I said, Monsieur, nous n'avons pas d'argent, mais je vous donne ma fille. So I don't have money, but I'll give you my daughter. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be clear, I didn't know what to do. By this time, a crowd of villagers are there. And he stood there, and he put his hands out, but this little girl suspended in midair, and he's not quite touching her. But I'm standing like this, and he's standing like that, but I've got hold of this child. And then suddenly he said to me, He was ashamed. He was ashamed. And he said to me, Why didn't you, in English suddenly, why didn't you tell me you had no money? And I said, so I told you many times. And he said, but sir, why did you get so furious with me? And then he let us go. <laughs> and then we 
So we saved $60, but it took a day. But $60 was a lot of money. I'm not trying to pretend I'm a smarty, but sometimes you just got to be patient. We never got angry. But what can I do? What can I do? And that's what we did. I thought, I thought it was a funny story, and my daughter and my wife asked me to do this. So, anyway. No, because uh, if you go there, there, there was some, that's that really didn't want me with the chairman that there is a country when you go there, they, they have that international sign that they will do that to you to make money. And I, we, that's why we did We don't pay because we, we, we remember that. But oh, yeah, someone warned us about this. There were know, many so experiences just, like that in Africa. And if you're patient, you don't have to pay. It's a game, but, you know. I, I, I don't look down on those people. They're trying to make a living, but I'm trying to get to Johannesburg. I'm sorry, and I don't have very much money. I don't think I'm better than them. Or they've got a job to do. They're trying to feed their families. But uh, that would have been $60. And then we had roadblocks several every day, so um, we couldn't afford to give our money away. Anyway, let's have a look at this. I told you that we were in Bangui. I've, I've come down with a, co a 